va tout de suite appeler les participants à la table. So we now have a round table um, to close the evening. It will be a long closing process uh, because it's a long round table. Um, we'll introduce the, the round table and then slot as we spoke about the um, priority um, registration period, but we need to t tell you about the legal aspects of uh, this. But while we set up the round table, I would like Ellen Marsuk to join us. Hello, Helen. How are you doing? Ça va très bien. Doing great. Merci beaucoup. Bonsoir à tous. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Euh, LM, donc très rapidement, avant, euh, avant qu'on commence, euh, est-ce que tu pourrais nous rappeler Hélène, before we begin, you are a, a jurist, a legal manager at OP3FT. That was important. Could you tell us about the legal terms for the registration period for trademark holders? As was so well explained before, there's a priority registration period set up by OP3FT for trademark holders, allowing you to register a dedicated fraudulence network before the FCR is opened up. It's quite simply a date as of which internet users will have the first fraudulence sites published on the internet. You should know that the period is different from a sunrise. Initially, the, we can see there's no special price for trademark holders during the priority registration period. And they are the same level as the holder of a Frogan's address after the FCI has opened up. A single price published on the site. Yes. The second important point is the length which is not a set duration, exactly the same as what is offered to anyone who wants to register a dedicated Frogan's network after the FCR is opened up for one to 10 years, very flexible and open. Another point is the term, uh, about two months. Next slide, please, so I can see the criteria. You will note that there are trademarks that are allowed Others are refused. For the allowed brands during the priority registration period for trademark holders, these are trademarks that are figurative, registered with an office, notorious trademarks as per the Paris Convention, trademarks protected by a court decision, or trademarks protected by a treaty or a law. For trademarks that are refused, trademarks that are not definitive, not fully registered, you also have trademarks that are canceled, there's an objection, invalidated or common law brands, very well known in the US, where these are brands of that are recognized in a state, but not nationwide. And lastly, brands registered with federated states or local offices. As to how they're registered, as you explained before, you contact your FCR account administrator and you make a request for registering with a dedicated Fraganz network. The trademark holder must then give information to the FCR account administrator depending on the brand, the trademark that they would like to register. If it's a trademark to be registered, you give the registration number as well as the registration office. If it's a well-known brand, trademark, you just declare that your trademark is well-known. If it is a trademark validated by a court, you must provide not only the reference and the jurisdiction where the decision was rendered. As for trademarks protected by statute or treaty, 
you must provide the statute or treaties reference. One important thing that's interesting is that you should know that all of this information can be found in the FCR WHOIS database, open to all. It is collected. It's not something that's hidden. As a matter of fact, that's quite important in terms of protection with respect to what is seen by everyone. The man in the street, as you can see here, can decide to check that the trademark is not being used and may, as we said before, carry out a legal watch, legal monitoring. They can then contact the person who registered the dedicated forecast network in the FCR who is database with the service that has been set up, or as a part of legal monitoring, they may find the name of the dedicated forecast network in the FCR public data, a sort of list that may be downloaded where you find the names as well as the choice of a trademark holder to be referenced by third parties or not. As for checking your declaration to the administrator, it's not like unlike Sunrise. You're not asked to provide all of these documents, but it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want to quite the opposite. Either the OP3 of T can decide to carry out a spot check or a report may be made by a third party. From then on, OP3 of T will contact you and ask you to provide vouchers, documents, and proof concerning the trademark you registered as a part of the dedicated focus network. From then on, if the registration or your, you gave false or erroneous statements, there are some consequences. For example, an infringement of the forecast technology user policy, which may lead to the cancellation of your registration. As regards protecting your rights, it's quite simple, as you can see. You have four means available to you. The first is the UDRPF procedure. <laughs> whereby you can enforce your rights. There are three cumulative conditions, requirements for this. Namely, let me see. You must prove that the dedicated programs network in dispute is identical or similar to your brand, leading to confusion with it. You must also prove that the dedicated focus network and dispute is registered and used in bad faith. And lastly, that the hold of the dedicated focus network and dispute has no legitimate right to use it. That's the UDRPF. But the other means you can bring the matter before the court, simpler but more costly, as we know. As regards what we said before, you can simply contact OP3FT and report an abusive use. The simplest means, I believe, and the most subtle and intelligent, I would say, is the smartest way, is quite simply to register a dedicated programs network during the priority registration period so that you can make sure that your brand will be protected because you registered it in this network. And you can publish for gun sites too. Exactly. Thank you, Helen, for having been so quick. Let's set up the round table. Donc on va prendre quelques secondes, Jean Emmanuel, pour Jean Emmanuel to take us a few minutes to set up the table. Let's call on our speakers to come up on stage and join us. Julie Laurent. LM can stay with us if she wants to. I think she was in a hurry to go. Romuald, Marie Emmanuel Haas, attorney at law, the Paris Bar, an expert in trademarks and domain names litigation at the WIPO, the NAF, the ADNDRC, and CAC. Aurore Simon 
French and European trademark attorney, partner at Camus. Uh, let me see. Camille Le Briqui, European agent at OHIM. Jean Christophe Guerini as well, attorney at the Paris Bar, partner at DS Avocat, specialist in intellectual property law. Here's our round table. Let's get it organized. And we can begin straight away. Jean Emmanuel. I would like to ask Julie Laurent, who is the legal manager of OP3FT, to present very briefly the role played by trademarks in the Forgans project. Julie, it's a good way to start. And then we'll go around the table so that everyone can introduce themselves. Good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Laurent, legal manager at OP3FT. My job consists in seeing to it that the legal framework is set up for the Forgans project. And tonight, we'll be speaking about the role played by brands in Forgans technology. We will be presenting or discussing with you, and we hope that you'll have many questions about the presentations we just gave you on the priority registration period that will soon begin. And the questions that trademark holders and their legal advisors may be asking themselves, namely, what trademarks can I register and cannot register? What are my obligations? as a trademark holder when I register a dedicated Forgans network in the prior period. What are the measures taken at OP3FT, contractual measures? We spoke about UDRPF and adapting the ODRP network that exists today in the domain name Realm, and that was drawn up by ICANN. It's all about speaking about the user's policy for Fogans technology, a chart that will soon be put online, laying down the obligations applicable to Fogans Network's holders and giving trademark holders as well a presentation of the means that will be implemented to protect their rights. So that those are the topics we'll be discussing at this round table. Before we begin, I will ask all of our experts to introduce themselves, starting with Aurore Druyon, who's at the far end. Hello, I'm Aurore Simon Druyon, League Council in France, a partner at Camus Le, B Le B Kiri, representing the questions that my clients who are trademark holders who register trademarks day in, day out, may be asking themselves about the benefits of registering, reserving their trademark with a Frogan's address. Hello, Jean-Christophe Guirini, attorney specialized in intellectual property. And what's specific about me is that I practice in trademark law and litigations. I believe that at this round table, I'm not the fireman, but let's say if any obstacles were skipped or crossed successfully by more or less well-intentioned people, but I know that you already have very efficient filters because of the system, the practitioners upstream, and also because of the experts and arbiters. But if things were to go sour, it's then that I step in. Thank you, Jean-Christophe. Hello, Marine, Marie Emmanuel Haas, attorney at law. Just set up my law firm, our first anniversary, as a matter of fact. I have a long-standing practice in domain name since I started working in this sector at the end of the 90s. I was an expert at various institutions. I hand down decisions. I draw up complaints for clients. I work in litigations, and I register trademarks. I'm always 
I always try to make sure that trademark management is tied in with domain names to contemplate trademarks within the field of the digital world. Keep the microphone. We'll start the discussion straight away. Given your expertise in domain names, what's your opinion about the work carried out by OP3FT to protect trademarks as a part of Rogan's technology? What's your first expert opinion on the mechanism set up for this protection? My reaction off the bat is that this is a clear-cut intention to reserve to trademark holders a maximum protection as far as technology allows that. And this must be emphasized because, in general, on the Internet, trademarks are often uh, not, su not su sufficiently uh, upheld. Can I ask you a question, Jean-Christophe? Thank you for that question. On a more serious note, I agree with what Marie Emmanuel said. With the advantage offered by Frogans and the tools that it has set up, to have some experience, the benefit from the experience that all Internet users have. The experts in intellectual property. I remember well before the year 2000, the first cases with uh, domain names and the first case law dating back to 1996 or slightly before that. So we have that experience. We know a certain number of cases that may occur. We have seen that before. We've handled them. But we also know that Human beings have a fertile imagination, and there are cases that we have not ex did not expect, and we'll discover them. But the tools that have been set up are good filters. I don't know if there will be sufficient barriers against any intrusion, but they're excellent filters. And today, it is difficult to set up better filters at a higher level. Thank you, Aurore. I agree with them. To open up the debate, there's one thing I'd like to add, though. If I understand the priority registration period would soon open. Now, I'm not sure that the big accounts or small and medium-sized companies or my clients are aware of your technology. I think it will be very complicated to bring them to protect themselves and uh, to reserve Fulgan's addresses, the three levels above all. The address explained to them that they need to register the three levels. Because uh, until marketing, let's say, I've seen what's the use of this technology, I think it will be very complicated to urge them to register names quickly and in two months' time, because it's just two months. While you're giving the presentation, I was wondering whether or not it could be possible to invent new systems instead of uh, copying what already exists with the pros and cons that we can imagine. I don't know if it's possible to e extend the period. I'm not sure that uh, two or six months would change anything. But maybe for small timers, for small companies, maybe they could block the name. I'm just saying this. I just thought of it. Let's say block the name for a given period without having to make a reservation. OK, good brainstorming. That's great for a roundtable, Romuald. You wanted to react to that? Well, for the legal part, I'll let Julie answer. That's her expertise. I can, act, I can speak about the promotional side. We know that all the trademarks in France and abroad will not necessarily uh, be aware of the technology for the promotion for the marketing team. It's a real challenge for us. This is why. We attend all the ICANN conferences. We're at NEMSCON. 
and we're working hard to inform as many people as possible. Now, we know that the six people on the promotion team, we can't cover the world at large. If we had this round table at a conference where we had workshops that were filmed, translated, and distributed, and we tried to find relays to make it known. And we look for any goodwill. Uh, all persons who would like to relate that information, they are very welcome. We work hard. As I said, the opening period was subject to certain discussions. When you discuss, for example, with an association like INTA, it's very important to take into account the feedback we can get from this type of discussion to see how we can do better. And in the next, if in, during the two months in question, if you see there are not many brands reserving, would you be ready to add two months? Right now, the official period is two months. Now, stop me, Julie, if I'm wrong, but this type of decision is taken by the board meetings of OP3FT. The board meetings uh, with three directors in view of feedback from the promotions task force, which reports back to the board on what has been done, if the board considers that for some reason the work was not accomplished in the general interest which we defend, in that case, there may be discussions on extending it. For the time being, we are we give our report to the board, which will take a decision in due course. Maybe, Julie, there's a real discussion that's emerging here with a real proposition, and that's great, on the possibility of changing the schedule. It's always difficult to say, we'll say two months, but if it's not enough, we'll do more. Maybe you can ex so that you can block a name maybe for some time. We we'll let Julie answer on that, and then I'd like our legal experts to give us answers on one point that we note a lot in domain names. Irrespective of the pre-registration uh, period, all the pre-registrations are done on the last day. If it's three months, six months, or a year, the result is the same. I'd like to hear you on that, and then Julie. Thank you, Stefan. Let me come back to what Romuald said. OP3FT is the endowment fund acting in the, com in the general interest, open to everyone. We've set up mailing lists, which anyone can join, making their contribution, sending in messages. The board of directors at OP3FT by statutes is obliged to take into account any messages launched by the community. If we receive 500 or 1,000 messages telling us, be careful, the two-month period is not in the general interest because we just contacted our clients and the strong demand by people who would like the PO to be extended, the board will take that into account by definition. It's laid down in our statutes. All our decisions are public, and at the end, we must take into account what is the community tells us. That's one of the founding principles of OP3FT, namely transparency and openness to the community. So obviously, if there was strong demand, the OP3FT board will take that into account. I agree, with, though, with Stefan. We know that trademark holders would ideally like the reserved period, regardless of the registrar, to last for two years, three years, five, or even ten years. The period we're setting up today, we said two months. But there are also protective measures, such as the UDRPF procedure that can be used by trademark holders to enforce their rights. So procedures do exist. 
extrajudicial, contractually, and also judicial procedures enabling trademark holders to have their rights upheld. Can you give the floor to Marie Manuel or Jean Christophe? In your opinion, we heard Aurore speaking of a real problem that she perceives. Has it been solved by, can it be solved by extending the period? As Julie just said, taking into account the general interest is important at OP3FT. Is it amongst the elements to be taken on board? And maybe you could tell us about the rollout of Sunrise in domain names in general. I think it's a tough period. It's still the launching phase for the new domain names, the TLDs, and amongst the rights holders, there's a lot of confusion and uh, a sense of fatigue. And also, we have the crisis, the recession, but we can't overlook that. 1,500 euros will be considered, I believe, by rights holders as a costly investment. And they will have to understand the technical benefits, the sales benefits, and how, by creating a network name, they can have a more efficient presence on the Internet, stand out amongst the, amongst the tough competition they have to deal with. But I think that the period is very short. I agree with what Marie Emanuel said. We must educate people upstream. That's your number one job. At the same time, you have the technical job. The comments made to us by our clients is that this is to come back to our strategy with respect to protection and managing distinctive signs. Once you register a trademark, you register the corresponding domain name, identical or similar, explaining to the client that it's good to be protected, to extend the scope, to avoid difficulties such as uh, uh, squatting and the like. But they have a trademark and a host of domain names. Now they'll have a host of domain names, and you recommend to them that they should register one or several domain names and uh, the intellectual and technical effort is praiseworthy for OP3FT with uh, preventive measures of uh, cases such as uh, cyber squatting. And that can reduce the risk that we have seen before and that we'll see again. But you'll have to explain to trademark holders that they have everything to gain and there's an investment that is worthwhile to be present, and secondly, to protect themselves, because we do that too in trademark law, for dams. We protect ourselves through uh, network names so that third parties cannot use them, register them, and then use them in different areas so that sometimes are very far removed from the corporate business. It can make you smile unless you're the victim of this type of action, but I think everyone has experienced this before. Either it's a, a direct competitor or an infringement on the company's image because of the site content that, well, um, may uh, not be in line with public order rules. So it's, it's in the interest of the public that will simulate and create a real and legitimate need to protect, much more so than any fear that your address may be stolen, the fear of cyber squatting that we have often seen in domain names, as uh, Marie Emmanuel has said, because now we have 400, over 400 new extensions in naming. In the future, we'll probably have 1,000. And each time, and this is an obligation for the new ICANN extensions, there will be a sunrise. And that's uh, 
uh, really part of the te technical explanations that we can uh, develop uh, uh, and achieve su commercial success and technical success for this new technology. Romuald, uh, you had something to add to this. Yeah, well, I'd like to concur with what you said about the, the feedback of the community that I'm getting as part of my promotional actions. Uh, we had quite a few conferences uh, with uh, uh, intellectual property uh, consultants and trademark owners, and we see that the strategies, by, by virtue of our neutral positioning, what we can see uh, in the feedback we get, there are two typologies of uh, behaviors emerging. The first typology is one of the visionary type, entrepreneurial type, which derives from the fact that one individual is interested in the technology and wants to get position to show that he is an early adopter and uh, wants to be uh, positioned with vis-a-vis -vis trademarks as a positive positioning, and other positions are more defensive, as we uh, seldom the case, but we do see some of them such as uh, for um, s like, uh, I mean, like name uh, uh, trademarks. Uh, precisely, I wanted to ask you during the prior to registration period when uh, two trademark owners have the same brand name, how do you handle this? Well, it's very simple to, it's first uh, in, first served. Both having rights, we can't choose who has is, is entitled to more uh, rights. Like Mont Blanc, for instance, is whoever the, the first who gets registered with the name Mont Blanc, that will be entitled to use the Mont Blanc because uh, they are entitled to do so. Now, I'm, I'm not from the digital side. Uh, earlier, we heard about the anti-confusability uh, measures. You spoke about the hyphen. Would that include, for instance, someone says Adidas as a network name, and someone says uh, Adidas dash or hyphen sports? Will he be told that it's imp not imp not possible? I think so. As I think it's a, it will not be possible, but maybe Monique could confirm. We have all the microphones on stage, I'm afraid, so uh, right, thank you. Um, so yes, indeed, if someone has registered Adidas, a second person could uh, register Adidas dash sport. And concerning Mont Blanc, it would be possible to register Mont Blanc without uh, the dash or uh, Mont Blanc without the dash. For about Adidas Dash Sport, we're not talking only about the um, uh, priority registration period because I don't think Adidas Dash Sport is a registered trademark. Maybe what is it we can accept during the period? As I pointed out, and you repeated it uh, afterwards, it must be known that it's the network name uh, for the brand. So. Adidas dash sport, uh, unless it's a registered trademark, cannot be used. It could be registered after the priority registration period. Is that what you mean? It was off the mic, so we couldn't hear. Uh, or uh, one question. We see uh, that uh, it is controversial. Uh, it's a matter of contention. Have you started talking about this to your clients? And if so, how do they react to this? Well, to be fair, no, I haven't started. In fact, because I had no idea of a type frame. And uh, telling my clients as soon without having any definite uh, data is like fear marketing, you know? Uh, so, so with all the new extensions, it will be more money they would fear, and without any grounds. And it's in times of crisis, you know, people uh, want to make sure that whatever they do is um, 
has a purpose. So I, I'm waiting for it to have a precise time frame so I can get back to them, you know, and be sure that they will do the right things. Jean-Christophe, well, it was maybe on the fringes of our subject matter, but uh, something I thought interesting to continue to uh, f f combat uh, usurpers uh, or counterfeiters that there was no anonymization systems for trademark uh, holders, which is something that can be quite useful for us as practitioners, because when you don't have to go this uh, step further, it's a form of comfort. Well, the uh, notion of anonymization in our database is not authorized, for one exception, uh, though, because there are some national laws that uh, make it compulsory, like Germany. A recent decision of case law made it uh, necessary for a registry to anonymize the um, holders. So it's by law that the uh, holders will be able to be anonymous. We, from a contractual point of view, we um, ask that the people be make themselves known. But if by the local, local law the, they have to be anonymous, then they will have to provide for this, and we, there's nothing we can do against this. For instance, you have the new GTLDs with ICANN. ICANN must allow for the anonymization of certain holders in certain countries that they need to sign riders with certain registrars that are uh, approved by ICANN that should not allow for this. They sign riders with them because their local law uh, makes it compulsory for them to make people anonymous. So from the moment the local law makes it possible to be anonymous, it will be possible. Though there, there is a safeguard is that in that case, the account administrator is obliged to publish on the public website whatever procedure they're putting in place to um, uh, provide for anonymization. And also, you can register from the moment you can just find you have uh, the, the, the rights on a well-known uh, brand. How can you appreciate, evaluate the notion of a well-known brand? Well, for the time we were talking about simple registration or declaration statement, if <laughs> there's a a check of Bio33FT, you will be asked for certain documents for a well-known brand, maybe it's all the evidence that show that, uh, that shows that uh, it's his well-known brand. Right, it's, there's been a court ruling uh, that shows that the brand has been uh, acknowledged as well-known, then that makes it even easier. First of all, this uh, discussion is very interesting, and unfortunately, we, uh, for lack of uh, time, uh, need to cut it short a bit. So uh, we still have a few minutes to, to take questions from the audience, if there are any questions. So I turn to the audience to ask if there are any questions from the assembly. Uh, for our speakers, we have about five minutes left. If we have no questions, we can continue with our exchange, but I would like to just make sure that there are no questions about the legal aspects, protections of the trademarks, trademarks as part of the deployment of the programs of technology. If we have no other questions, then I will maybe ask every one of you to give us a word of uh, conclusion. Say uh, whatever um, uh, advice you would give as experts or as uh, me as belonging to OP3FT, I would say that if we can manage to uh, uh, get across the uh, interest of this technology, the protection process will be easier, and that also the situation we are in today without any time frame makes it difficult to anticipate 
uh, any uh, things that should be protected by because it, it would be like um, scaring the wits out of our uh, trademark holders and uh, like uh, uh, putting too much pressure on them. So uh, is that a proper summary of the situation? Who would like to answer this? Romuald, you seem to be ready to say something. Thank you, Stefan. So uh, to conclude, I say that we've spoken a lot about the priority registration period tonight. I would just like to remind you that this was a, uh, something we had covered in the FTC2. The, uh, we had spoken about the UR, UDRPF, which is now available, that can be uh, uh, access, accessed on the sites and in the arbitration centers. Uh, forum, which is the uh, U.S. based uh, arbitration center and ADRC, which is in Asia, uh, are implementing this procedure and are working with us uh, on the implementation of UDRPF. So uh, this is a mechanism that is important to be aware of uh, for you and your colleagues, so that they know whenever you're interacting with clients, you have uh, tools available to you. This is my first point. The second point. Um, I would say is the the intermediation role that you can play in uh, uh, spreading the word of uh, this uh, fragrance technology because it's a long-term uh, mission to inform a global community and you have an advisory role uh, uh, to communicate the existence of this technology and make sure that they ask themselves the right questions that maybe for certain brands, it's uh, absolutely pointless to be positioned with the uh, fragrance technology. Others, maybe, um, uh, by virtue of their history, their positioning, and various contexts, have good reasons to be uh, embracing this technology. And our um, aim is to avoid that. Uh, to be to, is to make sure that any brands that would have an interest in using this technology fail to do so. Uh, because they would not be aware of. So uh, would uh, intellectual property uh, consultants, uh, could could they uh, play alongside us? Well, I'd say that for our clients, uh, what we should say is first to take it from two angles. First, there's a matter of investment. Is it justified for them? What is in it for them in terms of marketing? Will it facilitate the deployment of say, solutions in of a different media? Is it necessary for sev for them to uh, roll out their products on several uh, devices or media? Then if the answer is yes, there's good reasons for them to look at the fragrance technology. Now, so I think the other approach is more related to risks. Is there a legal risk that uh, uh, same name uh, company should choose to create their own network name uh, with the same uh, name, therefore. And would the fragrance technology um, allow being present on the web with better security? And there, uh, I'm a legal uh, person. I have no clear answer to that question. I think security is part of your concerns and our concerns, and therefore, uh, the approach uh, could be uh, including this uh, facet. Julie, now, what did you hear uh, tonight that you would be of interest? Uh, well, there's something that we didn't quite speak about tonight. The fact that uh, OP3 of, of T is open to the contribution of all people. We are currently developing our policies, our charters, uh, technical specifications. The first versions are being published on our website. And we're very much open to any comments, to any criticism that would <laughs> contribute to these documents. I'm talking about legal documents for myself, but to help them evolving in the right direction. Our legal environment is not something that is closed and partitioned. It is open-ended. and. We should always uh, try to adapt ourselves from a technical point of view, but also from a legal uh, and technical point of view. So this is a message for the uh, 
legal community, where the, the uh, trademark holders, the, 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 the lawyers, and the uh, solicitors to write to us to attend our workshops and, and conferences to talk with us about the evolution of our um, legal framework. It's important for us to have the feedback from this uh, legal community because this is the way. Um, Jean-Christophe, so a new uh, naming space, uh, being able to work hand in hand uh, to secure this is this a unique uh, opportunity, isn't it? Well, uh, it's, it is. I hope it will not be unique because I still have a, t a good 20 years to go in this uh, industry, uh, and I hope I will get other opportunities. It's true. It is uh, very enthusing, uh, and I would say it's challenging. Yeah, I'm talking about myself, from a personal point of view, from a technical point of view. I must say I don't understand a thing about this. Uh, so development is uh, not uh, Chinese. It's even worse than this for me. Um, and being uh, having to uh, understand, to make an effort to understand these uh, technicalities is something very challenging and motivating. And. This is something we all experience in our job as uh, lawyers. We are always uh, challenging ourselves, and it's a great opportunity for us, and also want to grow. This is something we experience with naming names and disputes in this area. We uh, uh, helped uh, the uh, uh, law about these uh, come about for the for the policy makers, we help them shape these policies and laws, and we are currently, hopefully, facilitating this, the process uh, through this contribution with OP3FT and other contributors, as you said, Julie, to create the, the, the law, the policies, the system, and that's the whole charm and, and the, the, the fun, uh, intellectual fun of, the, of this is that it's a planet-wide project. It's not a local thing. It's not a constituency-wide project. It's a real planet-wide project. Therefore, it's extremely uh, fascinating to be uh, there at a time when it's growing. So a great thanks to you. Um, thank you. I don't believe as Jean-Christophe said, that attorneys understand nothing. The three with us, I know that these are top experts in naming spaces. But is there a name to educate that should continue? I think there will always be a, a need to educate because forecast technology will evolve. But this organization is all about enabling people to understand and to educate them. It's quite simple. It's something that speaks to everyone. It may be very complicated, we agree. But it's not that complicated, because it can be explained very simply, clearly, so that what is key to this organization, transparency and simplicity, yes, it will evolve, but it will always be explained so that the man in the street not necessarily an expert can understand this technology, which is one of the most interesting. Thank you, Aurore. I think we can wrap up with that. I'm sure that you understand by listening to Judy that it's easy to have three months and a thousand emails to open 3 ft Shall I let you conclude? To come back to what was said before, in my industrial property firm, innovation is my job. So of course it's interesting, but to be able to communicate with clients, we need you. Just like you presented to us the small sites at the beginning, do you have a demo like that? because clients would say, what's it? What's it used for? It's going to cost a fortune. We need to explain it simply. I believe that a, a quick, the quick demonstration at the beginning would be good. Do you have something like that? Yes, we do. Would you like to answer that? Oh, yes. In the early program we spoke of, consultants, the firms, registration, 
bureaus. We have set up lots of documentation, slides, videos that we can pass on for promotional purposes. So we have video and documentation, all available on our website. Let me just point out that this night's conference and the previous conferences are online at conference.forgans.org. And you can see all the videos on YouTube where we have our channel. And you too can distribute the videos and demos you saw to, tonight to your clients. OP3FT, everything it does is made available to everyone free of charge to help to build the ecosystem. All the resources we spoke of tonight are online, and you yourselves can use them and send them out to your clients. Thank you all. We will now stop at that. A round of applause. Thank you so much. We've now come to the end of FTC3. We'll certainly, once again, organize other roundtables that are so good for discussion.